Hey folks, this is Casper, and I mentioned a while back in another video that I had plans to start a new city from scratch and that I would record the process uh, for public viewing. Now this isn't quite that, it's in fact a dry run for that, but I figured I'd take a break right here and now anyway to discuss some of my progress that I've made in this city, which is now eight days old. And out of that, hopefully, uh, I'll be able to offer some lessons in describing how I got here. So before I get started, I want to point out a few things, a few rules that I started with to start this city. Uh, number one is that I was not allowed, or I am currently not allowed, uh, to accept help from anybody that I knew previous to starting this city. Now, the second rule that I was starting with is that I had to start my city in the youngest possible world. And in this case, it's T-World or Tulek, which, uh, judging by the uh, global guild rankings here, appears to be somewhere in the neighborhood of six or seven months old, as you can see by the top one days. Now, in addition to the city that you've been looking at already, um, I will show you a bit of progress that I've made in other areas. Most notably is that I've collected all the uh, blueprints necessary to build the Ark, and I've also uh, accumulated a few duplicates. I have a very comfortable goods inventory, along with uh, several other offers in the market. I currently have 175 forge points in my inventory, despite having zero forge points in my inventory about 30 hours ago. On my first week of GE, I managed to finish level 3, although it was very expensive to get there. And uh, the reward was worth it, however, as I hit a 10% shot at the end of GE to collect my first terrace farm right here. You can see on the continent map here that I've reached the early Middle Ages Tower, as well as uh, one of the goods deposits, and have another province available for scouting. And as shown by the price list of expansions here, you can see that uh, with my next one at 3,000, I have thus far opened six victory expansions. I have a tavern with eight seats available. I've reached the top of the Iron Age tech tree and I'm now waiting just below EMA. I have a Viking settlement in the early stages of development. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and produce something there. I have 26 uh, unattached military units, all from the Iron Age, with the exception of my two rogues, as you can see. Um, I did have 37 military units about 10 minutes ago, but then I made a really stupid mistake and basically just threw away 11 units, but I digress. And finally, I have a castle at level 1. So now that you're all caught up with where I'm at in my city, uh, I want to dive into some of the more specific things that I've done and uh, in doing so, try to drive home once again two of the most important pieces of advice that I always try to give players. Uh, number one, build the arc first. Uh, before you do anything else and number two is that having an economic focus is generally better than a military focus now before i get into the economy versus military and the arc first strategies i want to take a moment to uh, give a really good example of some of the things i've been doing with quests so you can see here in my quest window that i have a story quest that i've completed and is offering me four thousand coins and i also have the gather six thousand coins recurring quest open now, my plan here is to use this reward to fulfill this quest. However, what you'll notice is that these 4,000 coins will put me over the desired amount by 1,000. And currently in my city, my coins are ready. So what this means is that if I clicked collect here, it would actually be wasting some efficiency. Now, added to the fact that I also have a bunch of aid available, which gives for each time, it gives me 50 uh, coins. Uh, given that I have a bunch of that available, I know that right now I don't have to click this, I can save these 1,000 coins. So what I will do instead is collect uh, enough coins to complete this quest. So I'm only, I only put in 6,048 coins instead of 7,000. So I saved a bunch. So now I'm going to skip ahead to the spend 15 forge points and go pay off uh, some of my arc. So this is the target building right now for paying off my arc, and I'm going to spend exactly 15 forge points. So now I've completed the 15 forge point quests, and just by virtue of spending points as I normally would, I've picked up an extra 5 ebony. So now here we are back to the 6,000 coins quest, and now is the time to accept this and take the 4,000 coins. And now I'm not going to complete this right away, I'm going to go back to my city and collect 2,000 coins. So here I've got collected almost exactly uh, 6,000 coins, and here I get another five goods. So just in this process so far, I've picked up 15 uh, goods of my age just by completing tasks that I would already be doing. Now the main strategy at work here in this city is chasing the Ark, trying to get the prints, trying to get the goods, trying to get the Ark built. 
And out of that practice is where you'll find a lot of the advantages that I'm using to my credit uh, to be able to get ahead of all the other players against whom I'm uh, competing. So one of the first things I did in order to chase the arc to get the prints and, and you know get it all together was find friends. I need to have friends on my list that I can use to invest in arcs later. And I'll show you exactly the way I did that. I opened the global rankings here, clicked on the great buildings tab, and found players with the arc. Uh, here are a few examples. There's one here. And just add these people as friends as I'm doing right now. So what I'm trying to accomplish here is add players that I can immediately get something out of. And in this case, you can see that this particular arc is only 71 forge points away from leveling. So it's possible that an arc at this stage is going to offer uh, a very cheap spot at the bottom in fourth or fifth where I can pick up a ton of metals and a ton of blueprints for a very cheap price. Now, something that's important with uh, what I did here is that I didn't wait to be able to contribute to great buildings before I started adding these friends. Uh, as you'll see as we're looking at the Bronze Age tech tree, uh, the social bar becomes uh, available as you research or once you've researched thatched houses. And so once I got to this stage, that's when I started adding friends right away, not only for the aid and for the uh, ability to pick up coins by aiding back, I was also setting myself up to be ready for this period right here when I finally was able to contribute to great buildings. And so as a result of this preparation, I was actually able to uh, get all the prints necessary for the arc, something like what I believe was 30 hours after I reached the Iron Age. Now the next step in uh, building the arc is to collect the goods, and I expected this to be more trouble than it was. I thought I'd have to go through the global rankings and message individual players and ask them individually whether or not they sold goods. I ended up not having to do that, however, because I consulted the guild I was in. So you can see here I've posted this message in the main guild thread um, saying I'm actively looking for sellers of arc goods. And almost right away, uh, 11 minutes later, somebody re replied that, yeah, El Instituto sells our goods for 1,000 forge points. And so right away, I messaged that player right here, and I said, hey, I heard that you uh, sell art goods. Is that true? And he said yes. And, you know, following a, a few messages of back and forth, we ended up making a deal. And so by taking the initiative and by knowing what I want in advance, I was able to accomplish many of my goals very quickly. Almost as soon as I reached the Iron Age, I had a step up on not only players within my own age, but players many, many ages above me. Now, as I described in this uh, other video, which is criminally underviewed, chasing the arc and, and gathering all the things needed for it is something that comes with a lot of advantages. When you build the arc first, you will then experience a bunch of runoff advantages, which will then compound themselves into greater and greater advantages down the line. Now, one of the examples I've focused on so far is expansions, and indeed that is probably the most valuable um, peripheral advantage, so to speak, that comes out of building the arc first. However, there is more than that. Now, you may notice that I've focused on chasing uh, blueprints from higher level arcs, which is uh, mainly because I want more metals for my buck, so to speak. But one of the things that comes out of that um, in adding these higher level players is that their taverns are going to be more advanced than if I just added players from, for instance, my neighborhood. And if we click on a couple here, we'll see that um, this one is completely maxed out in terms of upgrades. I'll click on another. This one as well is completely maxed out in terms of upgrades. And so the question is, what does that give me in addition to the opportunity to chase the arc? And one of the answers anyway is forge points. Now, due to the effort these players put into their own taverns, I have a greater chance of collecting forge points when I sit down at their tavern. So as a result of chasing arc prints from higher age players, I'm also collecting forge points faster by using their taverns, by sitting down in their taverns. And those extra forge points I can then use to, for instance, get through the tech tree faster, uh, start more investments in great buildings for profit, and all kinds of other things that I can do once again to compound an existing advantage. Now, besides building the arc first and focusing most of my energy on that, there is another major strategy at work here, and that is uh, focusing on economy before military. Now, I'm going to make separate videos about this topic, so there's no need to really absorb all that much right now. But the key component of this strategy is the fact that when you're away from the game, when you're not logged in, 
Um, when you have an economic focus that is one on goods rather than military, you can use your existing goods to build more goods in a passive manner. That is, you can earn additional goods um, when you're not online. And that is something that is not possible at all with uh, when you focus on military. So you can see here as I scroll through my event history that I've been pretty active in trading, um, profit trading that is. So while I'm away from the game, I could be on the beach uh, in the sun enjoying life and I'm still going to be earning goods, um, significant amounts of goods in fact, just by participating in profit trading. Now if you try to take that strategy and place it onto the military side, you'll notice that it's impossible. There's no action whatsoever that you can take to make your military units gather more military units without directly intervening yourself. Simply put, you can't use your existing military units to create more military units without being online. And that is not the case with goods. With goods, you can do that. And that is the fundamental reason why I believe an economic focus is a lot more valuable than a military focus. And as a direct result of me having this economic focus, I've been able to do things like open up my continent map, negotiate provinces that I wouldn't otherwise have been able to negotiate. I've also been able to negotiate my way through GE, which resulted in me getting this terrace farm, which is now worth five forge points a day, which at this level is a big deal. Now, in order to get that terrace farm, I had to complete level 3 of GE, and I can say with certainty that there is no way that I would have been able to do that had I taken a military focus. At this level, uh, with my attack and defense bonuses, which are only 2% each, I would have simply not been able to get there. But I was able to get there because I have so many excess goods. And as a result of having those excess goods, I was able to open up expansions by getting through my continent map and reaching EMA provinces, which once again, I would not be able to do if I were fighting my way through. But because I'm negotiating, I now have more expansions than a lot of the people in my neighborhood. And I'll even, here, we'll open up uh, the guy above me, let's say. Uh, you, yeah, you can see plain as day that this person's city is quite a bit smaller than mine. Uh, I'll go back to my city so you can get a good comparison. Note the size difference there. Well, even though I did spend uh, 400 diamonds on two expansions, which is non-standard, I nevertheless have quite a bit more space available. And the driving reason that I have this space available are number one, I'm chasing the arc and getting metals. And number two, I'm using my goods to then produce more goods via the market and allowing myself to afford all these extracurricular areas of uh, success, such as the continent map and GE. Now, to talk about this point a little further, I can say that this extra space is now compounding itself. For example, I have the space to have eight butchers in my city, and all eight of them are producing one-day productions. Now, out of the fact that I'm able to build so many butchers, I'm going to get even more advantages. And this is what I mean when I talk about uh, compounded advantages that come from A, chasing the arc first, and B, having an economic focus. Now, in this case, I'm going to, you know, produce two one-day productions in the butcher, which are meat skewers, and uh, these eight butchers are going to allow me to complete four recurring quests. Now, those four recurring quests could provide me with additional goods, additional metals, um, you know, forge point packages, all kinds of stuff that I can then reinvest. And so that's what I'm talking about when I continue to repeat that these types of strategies compound themselves and lead to greater and greater advantages down the line. Now, to close this video out, I want to offer a couple of rapid fire examples of some of the other more minor things that I'm doing uh, to help myself along the way here. Now, decorations are absolutely banned in all of my cities. You'll notice that there are zero uh, one by one decorations in my city. Now, even though the happiness they produce is pretty negligible and they're, they're not really great just based on that, the main reason that I don't have decorations is because it's a waste of aid. So when you have small little decorations, somebody will aid you and then that decoration is only going to produce a little bit more happiness. However, as you can notice in my case, I only have four happiness buildings and all of them are three by three. So the minimum amount of happiness I'm going to get as a bonus when somebody polishes one of these buildings is going to be 240 because that's how much the uh, school gives. However, if I had something like a tree in my city, which only produces 18 happiness, 
somebody could come along and polish that and I would be only getting 18 happiness out of it. And so the net effect of having larger cultural buildings rather than uh, small little decorations is that I make greater use of aid. And what that does is it reduces the number of buildings uh, that create happiness that I have to have in my city. And in this case, if none of these buildings were polished, my citizens would not be enthusiastic. But because I only have four of them, I can count on the fact that four people are going to come along every 12 hours and polish these buildings. Another thing I'm doing here is not upgrading anything in my tavern. I am not spending any money on tablecloths, trays, or planks. Um, all of my uh, tavern earnings are going into upgrading the table size and the number of chairs. So what I'm hoping to accomplish here is to speed up the process of getting to a max tavern. And the way I'm going to do that is by not burning any of my resources, in this case my tavern coin, on upgrades which are not going to help me as much as a bigger table will. Now there is a very slight downside here in that my friends might dislike the fact that I don't have any upgrades which help them, but if ever that happens I'm just going to replace those friends with other friends who don't care. Now once again focusing on maximizing uh, the aid that I receive, you'll see that my housing is all the longest time frame and the highest uh, population. So if I were, for instance, to build a bunch of roof tile houses, which are these ones, which produce coins every 15 minutes, if I were to get aided on one of those houses, that aid would only last, so to speak, 15 minutes. But because I have four hour housing, that aid is providing me with a lot more coins as a bonus than it would if I had shorter time frame housing. In addition to that, I'm getting a lot more population, which allows me to jam more stuff into my city. Such as having nine goods buildings in my city, eight butchers, a terrace farm, and all of these things that I have as a result of this extra population are things that I can then use once again to uh, compound an advantage and further help myself down the line. So I actually left out about 50% of the material that I had planned for this video. Uh, this ran longer than I expected, so I'm going to cut it off here. But stay tuned, I do uh, hope to be able to make a few more updates of this sort to be able to offer more of the types of lessons that you've seen in this video because I feel that if I'm showing this with a new city, uh, you, you know, members of LCN especially, uh, especially in Korch, should be able to take this information and realize how much more you can do with it when you have the support of LCN, when you have the bank available to sh ship you huge loans uh, to get you kickstarted in trading, stuff like that. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully by the time I make the next one in maybe a week or so, I will already have an arc. I would have paid it all off and things will be rolling. So yeah, until then.